and uh, it's not. I guess the, the the good thing is it's not completely mindless, right? I mean, there are other chill out things you can do, but you don't end up with a a train set at the end of it. <laughs> Just punching stream. Maybe that's how I should advertise myself. Instead of, you know, building trains in Minecraft. No, we're just punching dirt. <laughs> the stream where we punch dirt and uh, have idle conversations. It is, I mean, yeah, it, it's, it's, a, it's a bit chill and it's the kind of work where, I guess it's like knitting, <laughs> it's the kind of work where you don't really have to think very actively, but you just do it. And then over time, something productive is, is complete. One, two, three, four, five, six. Like as we uh, as we become more and more technologically advanced, the work becomes more and more mentally challenging. <laughs> They're punching and show. So you know, as as uh, we come, we become more technologically advanced. A lot of the simple stuff gets automated, and so you know more and more jobs are demanding people think a lot for extended periods of time and I don't think people's brains are really really up to the task in fact I think I'm pretty sure most people spend most of their work days not being productive because your brain can't really focus that hard for that long I mean even back in the Industrial Revolution, people were often just cogs in a factory. So they're in the factory line, they're doing repetitive work, repetitive physical labor for long hours. And I mean, that's, that's kind of bad for your, for your body, but it's kind of okay for your mind, like your mind can handle it. That sheep is so confused. You are so confused. Whereas, like, if your job is to teach, for example, like, how do you how do you mentally engage children for like what is what is the school day for like six hours a day? You know, how do you maintain creativity and intellectual curiosity for like six hours a day? <laughs> how do you do that? Not to mention the, the kids, right? How do how do kids stay focused for six hours a day? They kind of can't. You know, although having said all that, I'm still only playing um, about two and a half hours per session. Cow, cow, move, no, stop, stop that. I'm only playing two and a half hours per session, so it's not like I'm mentally straining myself. Even uh, if I'm not punching dirt.
Um, that should be dirt. I don't know if anyone has uh, read any research papers on work. Work throughout history. Uh, even today, people actually only do three hours of intense, productive work per day. <laughs> Most people don't don't really uh, acknowledge that. There's even limits to sustain levels of focus. Yeah, yeah that's why I said wrong. Hundred percent. And I think there's a certain harmful um, belief about hard work. I mean, everyone talks about working hard as though it's a good thing. It's not like it's not like your body is designed for it, or <laughs> it's not like your brain is, is is designed for it. Study hall, gym class, take a load off the mind. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Although in the study hall, you're supposed to be studying, Saffron. <laughs> study hall. But, but having said that, like, you know, if you, if you go to class for three hours and then you just chill out for the rest of the day, that's actually normal. Like, you're not being lazy, you're just being normal. It's abnormal to think you can, like, focus on your textbooks for, like, eight hours a day. That's not how it works. Yeah, I, I remember study sessions. <laughs> it's it's mostly chatting. <laughs> I remember. Back when I was at school. In fact, I think I was weird in that I actually studied. Well, I I kind of I didn't pretend to study is what I is what I didn't do. There's a there's a certain degree of pretending to work, which I I don't think is good for. I don't think it's good for people. And like long hours at work, I don't think is is good. I mean, you aren't actually work. People aren't actually working. Maybe they should change its name. <laughs> yeah, I mean that, that's the point I'm trying to get to, Sephron. I guess is that they they call it study hall, but it's more like it's more like recuperation for your mind. Might be more beneficial to take focus off of learning for that forty minutes. Yeah. Although there are there are some certain things, right? Like some things you can do without focusing, like the punching dirt. I can punch dirt for a long, long time without really focusing on it, and so I can do this for a long time. So if you spend your quote unquote study hall. like filing your notes or something <laughs> like organizing your notes instead of actually trying to focus on something you're just doing relatively um, simple things maybe that's more honest right <laughs> you're just filing for 40 40 minutes <laughs> and that's not a i mean it's, it's kind of productive it's not you know, it doesn't sound that productive, but if you organize your notes well, it's actually it's actually useful in the future, right? And yeah, like long hours at work, especially like Asian people, like you know, Asian people like me, like the Japanese. Uh, Hong Kong and I guess Korea I mean they, they for some reason they fetishize long hours at work but it's not like their economic output per person is significantly higher than anyone else <laughs> uh, 
yeah, punching gold is not mentally taxing, but it, it's still productive. Well, I mean, we're playing video games, it's not that productive. But if we imagine <laughs> that we're not playing video games, that we are actually building a train in the real world, <laughs> like it is, it is a productive thing that we're doing. But it's not mentally taxing, right? And so if you like, you know, do three hours of actually designing the railroad, and then do three hours of not mentally taxing work, like filing, and if that's your work day, I mean, that's that's fine. You're still doing, I guess, six hours of work. You're just not expecting them to 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 actually think for six hours. You know, like some of those hours are actually kind of relaxing. But the, the myth of long hours is that you're actually doing stuff. You're not. Like when, you, when, you're, when you're exhausted, your productivity completely tanks and you're just not doing anything useful anymore. One, two, three, four, five, six. I remember back in university, like, you know, most lectures are one hour. And uh, one hour lectures, I think, are, well, maybe it's just me. I think most people actually even... Okay, let me just finish my sentences. So for me, a one hour lecture is great. I can focus for an hour. Although I think a lot of my classmates would not do the full hour, maybe like 40 minutes or so they could do. But then some courses would have two hour lectures. <laughs> and it's so inefficient because you can see your classmates just zoning out after 40 minutes. And so the, enti the entire second hour is just wasted. <laughs> They're not really learning anyway. <laughs> Like you, you look around the lecture hall, and you, you see people just completely zoned out. <laughs> and so I, I feel like, why don't we just be honest with ourselves and just say, you know what, we can't, this is too hard. This is too hard for us. <laughs> why don't we just split this up, have like a break in between, just have one hour lectures, take an hour break in between them, and then actually, honestly focus on the lecture for one hour at a time instead of trying to do two hours of lecture. <laughs> so yeah, I'm, 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 I'm in favor of a little bit more honesty and a bit of more realism, being more realistic about our expectations for what people can do. <laughs> Like, I think I was unusual. Well, y yes and no. I, I didn't pretend to to focus when I'm not focused. I didn't pretend to study when I'm not studying. I didn't pretend to work when I'm not working. And so, I would uh, only... I would seem to work fewer hours. It depends on the lecture and the teacher. Well... Hmm... Wesley, I'm. It depends on the lecture and the teacher, but the thing is, if we're talking about university lectures, they're all pretty hard. Like they're not they're not easy stuff, <laughs> right? I mean, I did architecture, so I mean, drawing class. I guess drawing class could go on for like three hours and you'll be fine. If you're not like you know trying to learn new information, you're just kind of sketching. If you're interested, you have an interesting teacher. I can handle two hours. I wonder, I wonder, I mean, I wonder realistically if you're retaining the information. Maybe you are. And, I, and then I also wonder realistically how, how many lecturers can handle that. And even if the lecturer can do that, how many students can do that? You say, if you're interested. You can do two hours. Yeah, okay. But then out of a class of, of 
50, or not 50, like another class of like 30, how many of those students are fully invested in that particular subject, and how many are just there for the for the grades? And so if you, if only like five students are interested enough in the topic to survive two hours unscathed, <laughs> then maybe that's not really sensible for the whole class. I mean, if you're, if you're in like a postgraduate course and there's only 10 students in the class or something, yeah, okay, you know, maybe you can do that. Like he's like you, 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 it's a conditional that you're offering, Wesley. Like you conditionally, on the condition that if you're interested in that topic, you can do it. But education is not about that. Education is well, it's kind of about that. But education is more about teaching everybody, not just people who are already interested in the topic, right? Anyway, I think I just think it's more sensible to have uh, slightly less demanding expectations of what people should do <laughs> and how long people should focus for and how long people should work for. Uh, that goes for a long way. Let me go back and fill this stuff in. You usually choose subjects you're interested in, though. I guess you do, Wesley. I don't know what what course you took. I took architecture, and architecture is maybe a little different, because it's a oh, am I dropping frames? It's a professional degree, so architects you have to know certain things in order to qualify as an architect, right? You can't just oh, I like history, but I don't like physics, so I guess I don't know anything about building physics. After I graduate, you can't do that in architecture. You have to know physics <laughs> because your buildings are going to fall down otherwise. So architecture, you kind of you have a there's, a there's a wide range of things like there's design, and then there's economics, and then there's physics, and then there's art. So there's a whole range of things, and you you kind of have to have at least a baseline ability in all of them. So maybe it's different for for architecture. Also depends on what you're up to before the lecture. Yeah, that's right, Saffron. <laughs> that is definitely correct, Saffron. <laughs> uh, this goes further. I've done car technology and now I'm doing photography. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, but I mean, if we just kind of throw some made-up numbers out there, I would prefer 100% of the class staying focused for 40 minutes than say, you know, 80% of the class focused for 40 minutes and then wasting the second hour of a two-hour lecture and then 20% of the class actually learning for two hours. Like, it's just... It doesn't seem sensible <laughs> to to think the whole class will be able to handle the two hours all the time, right? And you know, the same thing applies to to work out in the in the workforce. I mean, what's the point of 12-hour workdays? Like, what, do you really think people are productive for 12 hours? They're not. I'm 
you're just paying them to sit there and zone out. <laughs> At some point, you're just paying them to sit there and zone out, really. It's counterproductive, too. Like, you know, if you work an hour, uh, relax for an hour, and then come back and work another hour, you might actually get more done than if you work for two hours and then take no breaks. Like, you know what I mean? It can be counterproductive. Maybe hours are not a good way to measure work anyway. Although I don't know what is a good way to measure work. Maybe there's no good way to measure work. Maybe it's all a lie. <laughs> it's all a lie. It's possible. I mean, you can't measure work by output, because then how do you how do you do how do you measure stuff like speculative research? Like, imagine you you're doing some sort of scientific experiment, like you're doing chemistry, you're trying to find a new chemical, right? And then like you spend a week on it, and it turns out you can't do it that way. So what? Did you just not do anything the whole week? No, you did a lot of stuff the whole week. It just didn't work out. <laughs> like if you're trying to invent a new machine, it turns out it doesn't work that way. Did, did you do nothing for the whole week? No, you did a lot of work the whole week. It just didn't turn out. So you can't really measure work by output either. Um, if you can't measure work by hours, you can't measure work by output. I don't know. <laughs> How do you measure? You can't measure work by input. I mean, if you measure work by the amount of energy you spend in terms of calories, I mean, you can just spend the whole day running around in circles, going nowhere, and you spend a lot of calories but get nothing done. Maybe there's no good way to measure work. Maybe it's all a lie. Measuring work by output is especially bad for things like uh, invention and scientific discovery. Only the cake is a lie. Well, you know, ironically, if you have a cake and you eat it, you know, no one can take it away from you once you've eaten it. Ironically, everything else is alive, but the cake you eat is real. <laughs> Am I lagging? Am I I'm not lagging, right? So I have 300 bucks to spare on getting myself something nice, but I can't think of anything. Don't you have debt to pay off? Okay, I'll take the cake then if you don't want to step <laughs> The cold tea, save it for a rainy day. Three hundred bucks to spare on yourself. Well, how much do you need to to spend it? 
sometimes people just need to spend money. Paid off about 600 bucks of the dead and 10 minutes ago. Promised this birthday stuff wouldn't go towards it. Okay, fair enough. I used to know a girl who literally used shopping to de-stress. I mean, it was it was kind of like a stereotype, but it was true. Like she would go shopping and then come back happier and you're like wow it really happens like that <laughs> so Cody if you're that sort of person <laughs> you are allowed to spend that 300 dollars 